Hello and welcome to another Creative TV uh, video production. Uh, in this particular video we are going to cover uh, the first steps of creating a nice uh, scatter type system f uh, and in this case I'm going to use grass as our subject matter. Um, but it could be this this system here, this tool set here can be used for any um, any type of object that you want to scatter over some custom terrain and uh, this, these objects can then be used um, in any game engine right? because it just becomes an OBJ or an, FB, or an FBX at the end of the day right? The, the power of Houdini allows us to quickly create our own level building tools uh, that you find in a lot of popular game engines and gives us the ability to customize them pretty quickly without having to know um, too much programming right? really the programming it just um, is um, isolated to these really small expressions, right? We actually get to utilize the power of the nodes, the pre-built nodes inside of Houdini to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. All right, so let's let's get started and start to build our own. Okay. Uh, I also must say that this isn't going to be uh, an intro to Houdini, um, so this video does assume a certain amount of knowledge of Houdini. So I'm not going to be explaining everything I'm doing. All right. So I just wanted to kind of preface it, the the uh, uh, video tutorial with that. So this is actually an example poll. All right, so let's go geo. I want to make a new geo node. I'm going to delete the file node that's in there, and I'm going to turn off my example. Turn on my grid. And I'm actually going to create a grid to start off. And what I want to do is add some more resolution to this guy. And so I'm going to copy the parameter of the rows and apply it to the columns so I can actually create a uniform resolution. All right, so I'm going to just give that a few more rows and columns there. Uh, and then I want to actually apply some normals to this. So I'm going to use a point node for that. And I'm going to say add normal. All right, and if you don't see these right off the bat, it's most likely because you don't have these guys turned on here. OK. Uh, and then what we need to do is actually add a paint node to all this. What is going on here? Hold on one second. There we go. I need to add a paint node to this guy. So we're going to drop down a paint node. And this allows us to actually uh, give vertex color uh, to the, uh, the actual points. Alright, so I'm going to actually start this out by just applying black to everything. And then in my foreground color, what I want to do is I want to apply some red. So I pick some red, I'm going to hit enter to bring up my brush and make my brush really big with shift and left click. Alright, so let's just paint some red out. Alright, and so what I'm going to actually do is I'm actually going to utilize the three different, the, the three channels of RGB. Um, and so each channel will actually perform some other operations. So red is just going to be where we want to actually disperse objects. Um, and then green is going to be I think this is, there you go, Pull on green. What I want to do is I want to add some green because green is going to be where objects get larger. So I can actually modify the scale of the scattered objects by using this green value. And then blue is going to be, actually let's just make that one. Blue is going to be where things are um, actually uh, obstructing the, the scattered objects, right? So we won't have any scattered objects in these areas. Let's do something like that. Okay? So you can start to see how this would become a really cool um, landscaping tool type. Alright, so the last step, I actually want to smooth out those values, right? Because right now, because it's being interpolated between points, we're getting some really harsh edges. So I'm just going to drop down a smooth node and change its operation to color. And there you go. So now we get some nice gradation between color and you can increase that smoothing. All right. So in a, in a later video, I'm going to show you how to hook all this up to uh, your a custom GUI um, inside of your own digital asset. But for now, this works since we're just basically conceptualizing and prototyping this tool. All right. So another thing I like to do is to start to bundle up um, kind of uh, operations inside of my my digital assets with a net box all right so you, all you do is you just select all the nodes that you want to put into a net box and hit control n and that puts this around it like that just allows you to organize your your graphs a little bit better and also um, for me it starts to tell me uh, which parts of 
the tool that I'm creating might become components or procedural tools outside of this tool that I'm building here. So I might want to actually create a digital asset out of this by itself just because I'm going to be doing this a lot. <clears throat> Alright, so now what we need to do is extract wherever um, there's red in the object and that's relatively easy. All we need to do is just create a delete node. <clears throat> Alright, and what I'm going to do is delete by expression and I want to select everything that is red or in the red channel and it's greater than 0 0.5 for now and then I'm going to say delete non-selected and that'll get me the areas where I can actually scatter objects alright and you can actually later on we'll actually attach this value up to our digital asset so we can increase that area or we can decrease that area so we can really handy flexible tool let's just keep it at point three how about that <clears throat> alright so now all we need now is a scatter node so I'm going to drop that down like so and there you go now we have a whole bunch of points with which we can actually copy other objects to pretty easy pretty easily alright so let's just put it in a, a value of about 200 <clears throat> Alright, so now we have our points. And then let's create a um, let's create a cube. Actually, that's a box in Houdini. Let's create a box. Let's do that. I'm going to template my current scatter by holding down control and hitting the template. That way I can just see the relative size here. And I think what I want to do is just make it a little bit smaller, just for now. Just make it 0.5. That'll be fine. All right, and all we need now is a copy node. Easy. So we feed in our points to this end, right? If you middle mouse over the inputs, you can see the template to copy to. So the template is the point, and then we want to add the primitives to copy, and that's just going to be our box. And so now we'll have a bunch of boxes all copied to those points. <clears throat> all right, so now what I want to do is if I come back to my paint node here, you'll notice we also have this yellow color and that's just because that's where we've added green now I want to actually use this color let me actually go to the smooth node I want to use this color to say any object that falls within this color is, is larger inside in size okay and to do that we're going to need a custom attribute okay so what I'm going to do is drop down an attribute create node let's do this like that and this guy is going to be of type float and of class point and I'm gonna call this um, a scale mod <coughs> scale mod and the default value is going to be the green color plus one <coughs> and this is plus one so that it, when it gets out to the black areas um, it'll just be one basically and as it gets into here it'll be two or greater <clears throat> Alright, I just don't want to ever have a, a zero value for scale because then I will have a cube that has no width, length, or height. <clears throat> Alright, and so now what we need to do is actually uh, visualize our, our data. Okay, so I'm going to turn this guy off there. I want to be able to see what, my, what values I'm getting as I'm going from the red to the yellow. So what I can actually do is I can hit D on the keyboard go to my grids and markers and I'm going to delete these other ones that I've had here and I'm going to create a new attribute text and I'm going to right click on it and say edit and the name of this is going to be um, our scale we'll just call it scale and then our attribute is uh, scale mod I'm going to change the color to yellow alright let me accept and turn it on <coughs> Now you can see that if we get into the yellow area here, we actually have a value of 2, or a little bit greater. And as we get out, we fall out here, we have a value of 1. Alright, so that we have, we'll be able to control the, the size of our objects that way. It's pretty nifty. Let's turn that off for now. And now what I want to do is I want to transfer those values onto my scattered points here. Okay, so what we need for that is an attribute transfer. <coughs> I'm going to 
plug this in because again if you middle mouse click over these inputs we can transfer the attribute from this guy and we'll put it into this guy alright <clears throat> and the type is going to be points and the destination is going to be points and we want to get scale mod so now if I actually turn this guy back on you can see that we actually have the values applied now to these points and they've been interpolated based off their closest uh, points um, in the, near, the nearest neighbor basically <clears throat> All right. so now we actually can use that value to scale our objects so let's go about using it and we can also create a new netbox around these guys because this is another operation that could be used over and over again so I just want to organize it <coughs> excuse me alright so now go to copy and inside the copy node I want to start to utilize that value that we've just created so I'm going to say stamp inputs and I'm going to call this my um, scale and we're going to come into the value for the scale and we're going to utilize the point expression function now what this is going to allow me to do is just get access to that value on a per point basis so let's go into the attribute create one and we want to get the scale mod value actually that's not the first thing we need there we need we need the float point the point number right so we need the current point that we are working on inside of this copy node right because this thing is going to cycle through until it exhausts all the, the points that are have been fed in from the edge or from the uh, scatter node all right so it's kind of a loop so basically by using the p dollar pt we're saying every point in this and then we want the scale mod and we want to give it a default value of zero like so all right so there you go so let's go into our box here and what i want to actually do is just i want to uh... raise this up here I want to get to my. There we go. I'm going to raise this up just so that the pivot's down at the bottom here. So when I actually create a new transform node and drop that down, the pivot's actually at the bottom now. Alright, so I can actually now use this, this new transform node and I can say, I can use the stamp function and get access to the copy one and use the scale variable and give it a default value of zero. We'll copy that <clears throat> and paste it into the other axes and let's see what we get. And do I have stamp turned on? Our scale. Let's scale, it looks good. Okay, and so we should. Oh, so what? What? Uh, what's the reason why we're not seeing the actual scale value is because I am telling it right now to get it from attribute create. But since it's being created there, we actually need to get it from attribute transfer. So instead of attribute create, I need attribute transfer. There you go. There you go. So now we actually you can start to see. <clears throat> the value. What we can actually do is just multiply this by 0 0.5 so we can see a little bit better view. So you can see how it gets taller there. And it looks like my pivot got screwed up at some point there. So let me actually go back here and get this above the grid again here. Like so. Go. There you go. No? Interesting. Oh, well. anyways, it's working. I'll have to look at that in a second. So now, if we actually go back to, if we template this by holding on control and we go back to our paint node, what we can do is we can actually start to subtract some green. So let's say we go into green. And we make this 0.3. You can see now, I can actually make these guys smaller. 
So now I've just created myself a cool little uh, scatter painting tool. Alright, so that kind of sets up uh, the basics for all this um, for the next uh, series of video tutorials. So in the next video tutorial we're actually going to go through and start to really um, add in some advanced functionality. Just get some, get some more uh, features available for us and actually turn this into a real grass system. And then eventually we'll turn it into a digital asset and uh, create some grass for, for Unity, for a custom terrain. Alright, if you have any questions, feel free to give me an uh, email at kennyl at creativetd.com or just visit the website at creativetd.com. Thank you very much.